What's going on guys? We got a pretty quick machining project here, or at least I hope it'll be quick. This is a irrigation valve and the problem, I've already got it kind of tore apart here. This shaft runs down through the stem here. You got the handle, it goes on one side so that you can turn it, turn the valve on. And then on the other end, I actually machined this piece before but the measurements on the riser in the ground are weird they're not standard I'm thinking maybe they're metric because they're they're like in between a sixteenth or something so I'm gonna have to redo this piece I want to do the same type of piece here and I'm gonna build it out of stainless so it doesn't rot out like the last piece did the problem is this hole is not big enough but if I drill it out the stem piece is a heck of a lot bigger than this is the problem with that is there won't be enough meat left here if I drill that out that it will hold up I'm gonna have to go bigger on the OD here and then machine the center hole down and then I'll machine the slots here so that it can grab the pin at the top and open the riser so we're going to get over to the lathe and get started. Okay, so here's the piece of material I've got. This is left over from the pump shaft build that I did. Uh, the guy I did it for just gave it to me. And I kind of like that because then I can use it for other jobs and stuff. I believe it's inch and a quarter. So it is stainless. We're going to go ahead and just use a little piece off the end of this. all set up okay we're gonna face this off going to take anything off the outside here so now we're ready to center drill center drill chuck key tighten our chuck that's about where we want Okay. Center drilled. Now we gotta get our drill bit set up. Replace it. That's better. Okay, so our piece is in the chuck. We've got about 70 thou to take off before it's to inch and a quarter long. So we're gonna go ahead and face that off. Fire in the hole. Twenty-five foul. I'm gonna try taking forty on this next one. That was pretty light. That's forty. Looks a little better. Okay, now I'm gonna check my measurement. 
I'm just flipping my calipers over on this just to see how close I am because it's in the chuck and I can't get the jaws on it this is good enough for what it is it'll get me close enough so we got about 50 thou to take still so let's just take 50 and see what happens after I get this length cut I'm going to chamfer the outside and the inside That's close enough for what we're doing. I'm gonna grab my other tool. So that insert's just a square, so you know these are 45. And you can just throw it in there. As long as your tool holder's square, you know you're at 45. You wanna make sure that your piece is sticking out far enough that you're not gonna crash the machine obviously and then I like to actually twist the workpiece just a little bit when I tighten it it helps it get in there so it's straight I'm gonna see if I can't just knock off the just a little bit of a burr on the inside there can't go in super far because you'll hit the tool but should be just enough just enough the other thing you can do you want to be really careful doing this you don't want to hold you don't want to wrap it around your finger or anything if you just touch it in there if it grabs it and something happens just it'll just pull right out of your hand Okay. And you definitely don't want to stick your finger in there with it. So I'm going to flip it, do the same thing. We'll start with the inside since that's the tool that's in. I'm going to hit that with some emery. piece nice and chamfered looks good should fit over the shaft on that riser so now we got to go over to the milling machine we got to mill our slots and drill our hole for our roll pin so let's go do that now It's time for today's Super Cool Tool. Okay, so today we're talking milling machine. This here is one piece of equipment that is a game changer when you're talking fabrication. This machine is basically a drill press on steroids. And when I say that, what I mean is the table... You can lock it. This particular model has a power feed on the Y axis, so you want to make sure your table's unlocked. Okay, I can set this to a variable speed, and then it will just move the table and cut a slot or machine or whatever it is you're doing. You can slow it clear down to where it's barely even moving. You can speed it clear up. Okay. It's also got a rapid traverse button here. Sometimes it takes a second to kick in. So if I want to rapid traverse over, I don't want to sit and wait for it to move over. Or if I don't want to adjust my speed, you see it's going slow. If I hit the rapid traverse, it'll quickly go back and forth. Right? Okay. So 
I got my speed adjusted, rapid traverse, and then you can stop it. Another feature that's really handy is a DRO here. Add on. So I can reset those to zero. Now if I move my X or my Y, you can see those will this this one's jacked up. I've got I've actually got an issue with one of the magnets or something that is on my DRO hardware here, so I've got to figure that out and fix it. But you can see how that works. And if I move my Y, you can see it counts up. So it works basically the same as DRO on a lathe. So that's pretty handy. I need to get that fixed, but that came with the machine. I did buy this machine second hand. I think I paid $3,500 for it. It is a sharp mill, but it is a Bridgeport copy. So these are actually built in Taiwan, I believe. A lot of the bridge ports that are this style are hard to find. And when I say this style, it's got a variable speed dial here. So let me just give you an example of how that works. Okay, so I had to turn my phase converter on so I could run this. This does run on three phase power. When I bought this, kind of a funny story, I bought it and the guy that I bought it from was a gunsmith. and. He really wasn't using it to its full potential because as a gunsmith, your area of operation is pretty small. So he, he didn't really use the table and a whole lot of stuff like that, which was good for me because a lot of this stuff, there's very minimal lash, very minimal wear. So that was good for me because not a lot of those things were wore out like a lot of these older mills are. So when I bought it from him, he had it wired up. He unwired it and we loaded it on the trailer with a rented forklift. I brought it home. I assumed he had it wired up on low voltage three phase, so 230 volt three phase. I checked the schematic inside the motor and I wired it up that way. Well, when I first got it running, it didn't sound right. The motor was heating up and I checked voltage. I checked all sorts of things. I, I initially thought something was wrong with the mill, but it in fact was not the mill. After many hours brainstorming and trying to figure out what was wrong, I went back to the schematic and found out that there was three little jumpers that need to go on the terminals inside that box which never got included when I bought the mill. I don't know if he took them off when he sold it to me and unwired it or what happened there but I ended up putting jumpers back in it. I did have to get the motor rebuilt because it smoked it so I got the motor rebuilt put that on put the jumpers in and it runs like a dream now. So you're pretty much gonna operate this style of mill um, it's not going to change no matter what brand it is the controls are basically all the same and you'll hear people say a bridgeport copy this is a bridgeport copy so all the all the controls are the same this this will engage your up and down feed um, you've got your gearing here for high and low this runs your this is your lock for the quill this will run your quill up and down. This is your quill feed to engage and disengage. You've got a speed range here, high, neutral, and low. This knob here, you don't ever want to turn this when the motor's not running, but that will adjust your speed. This is a lock for when you're loosening the quill up here. You can push this and it will lock that so that you can use your quill wrench. Obviously, you turn it on. That was another thing I had to change when I got it. It was wired up backwards, so I fixed the wiring in that. I built this cover for it because it didn't have one. And I was worried I was gonna stick my hand up there and get zapped. You've got different oil ports and grease ports here just to try to maintain the machine. Uh, there's a few things on this that were a little bit uh, jimmy rigged. The handle, that's obviously something that he, he built. I'm eventually going to build an, a nicer one. Uh, this here, I machined this because when I bought the machine from him, it had this piece with a pair of 
vice grips on it. That's what he was using for the handle. I have a hard time rolling that way, so I machined this and I TIG welded it into this bolt. So that's my lock for the quill. There's just a ton of things that you can do with this machine. Um, I've taken this machine, I completely cleaned it up when I got it. It's obviously a little dirty just because, you know, I use it. It's a very handy machine to have and there's multiple things you can do with it. So let's just go over a few of the controls, okay? So this moves your Y axis. This moves your X axis in and out. This is called your knee, literally your knee. And I wonder if it's not called that because you bang your knee on it and swear every time you walk past it. But that makes your table go up and down. This head will pivot this way, it'll pivot this way, and then this section of the head can spin this way. So there's not a whole lot you can't do with the milling machine. You've got high and low, you've got your quill feed here, which engages this. So if you want to, like if you're running a fly cutter and you're boring a hole, you can use this to engage it, and then when you pop that out it will feed down that disengages it you can adjust your speed here this is your handle for your quill this is the lock your gearing is over here so you got a speed range of high neutral and low your quill is up here it uses this quill wrench here that's how you loosen things and take things out when you do that you use this lock loosen that up and then you usually have to give it a tap and that pops it loose and then you can pull it out those are the basic controls that you need to know to operate a mill for things like drilling holes and if you're face milling something like I explained before you've got forward off and reverse we kick it in forward and then you use this you only want to use this dial when it's running and you can speed it up or slow it down. See, that speeds it up. So now that's turning faster. If I go the other direction, it's going to slow it down. So you can do that in forward or reverse. There's your brake. It's just a very useful machine. One of the other good things about it is it's variable speed. Like if you're drilling a hole in stainless, you want to slow it down. You want to cut it very slow. Slow hard pressure is what you want when you're cutting stainless. With a variable speed head, you're able to slow that down as quick as just turning a knob, which in my opinion is, is a game changer. Okay, so something else that I think is worth taking a look at as far as tooling goes is this set right here. These here are called collets. If we take a half inch collet here, if you don't have a drill chuck that's set up with an R8 shank, this right here is called an R8 shank. And that's what most of these milling machines like this use. They use an R8 shank. And that's what allows it to slide up in there and then you tighten the quill down, okay? So if you don't have a drill chuck, with an R8 shank that you can put a drill bit in that. You can get a collet set like this and that collet will slip over the drill bit, okay? And how it works is it's got these slits in it. And then when you slip this up in the mill and you tighten that down, as you tighten the quill down, it's gonna tighten that down to where those slits tighten down on whatever it is you're clamping in there. You can use this with end mills, you can use this with drill bits, any sort of tooling that has a round shank like that, what you do is you just match. You can see they've got a size on them. This is a 9 16 So you just make sure that that is the right size for whatever kind of tooling you're trying to use. Obviously, collets are a very useful tool with the milling machine. Okay, moving on. This set here, obviously you've got different sizes. These are end mill holders. 
end mills typically only have a various size of shank on them. So, you know, on this one you've got a 5 8 shank, half inch shank, 3 8 shank, 3 quarter shank, and 3 16 shank. These are nice because you just tighten the Allen screw down and it locks the end mill in. It does have an R8 shank on it, so it slips right up in the mill. You can see they all say R8 on them. So just some more tooling for the milling machine. If you do have a milling machine, this is one of the first things you probably want to buy. And this is the tooling set for blocking things up. What you can do is you can take these, And there's all different sizes of bolts. But what you do is you take these, which is called a T-nut, and then you've got just these regular nuts. So you take the T-nut, then you can take and screw your bolt in. And you can take these, okay? Let's say you got a part that you've got a, a large part you've got to set on your table. So this part slips over the the bolt and then it obviously matches up in those teeth this end where my hand is will sit on top of your part and then you will take your nut and you'll tighten that nut down and it will clamp down your part so there's just a lot of uses for this kind of stuff the other good thing is I like a system where you can take and put all your tools back and then you know exactly where everything goes you know there's nothing missing. That way you keep track of all your tools. And I can look at this set and I know that all my parts are there. I like things like that. Drill index. If you got a milling machine, you obviously want a drill index that goes up in 60 fourths. And if one's missing, you know it's not there. That one is for half inch, which comes standard in a smaller set. I like this type of system. So that just about wraps up our milling machine. Um, it's a super useful tool. It's a super cool tool. It is a game changer for fabrication and makes lots of fabricators lives a lot easier out there. So that one definitely made our list. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it down below. Um, and if, if you guys have a certain tool that you've seen me use that you would like me to show on super cool tool segment then let me know leave a comment and I'd be glad to accommodate you guys so let's get back to the project okay so we got a centering head on this I'm just getting ready to tap it with a hammer to put a center pop on it so that I know that I'm lined up center with the hole give it a little pop a nice little mark on it. We're going to use a number four center drill on this one. Okay, that's lined up perfect. Now we're going to put an end mill in. The picture that he sent me shows 7 sixteenths. Well, it shows closer to 3 eighths. It's just over 3 eighths. But I'm gonna go 7 sixteenths. You know, it'll, it'll function properly, so we're gonna go with that. I like using two flute. Oh great, I don't have a 7 sixteenths. <sighs> well, there's one. But it's freaking hammered. Why does it skip from three eighths to half? Lovely. Well, I'm gonna roll the dice with this hammered one, I guess, since it's all I got. Try to cut this in one pass. 
which with the two flutes, no big deal. Especially one that's sharp. This one's dull, so we'll see what happens. We're going to slow it way down. about 550 foul deep. I would have set my DRO, but it's jacked up at the moment, so I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way. It's actually cutting pretty good now. You can actually go just a hair more. Okay, there she's cutting. there so I've got to flip it now what I should have done was marked it with a sharpie and then I could have transferred it over but I didn't so I'm gonna put this back on there should be just enough showing there that I can put a center pop on it and then once I get that on I'm gonna transfer it around to the other side we'll go to that point we got a center pop on there you can see we got our line transferred I was able to get a center pop on the inside and transfer the line from the inside to the outside. Like I said, it's gonna be close enough for this. If it was something high precision, I would have to figure out a different way. So for this one, it's gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna get it all set up with the center drill lined up and then throw this back in. Then we can start milling it. That's a good sign. It is exactly lined up with our center pop mark on this side. It's pretty dang close to being perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna swap it back out. I've got my Y travel locked in so that it won't move side to side, but I can still move this way. watching my part to make sure it doesn't start lifting up on me. You'll notice it quiets down when I give it a shot of oil. It's not quite as squeaky. <sighs> we are good. Okay. Slots are machine. Before I move it, I'm going to check this for level, and then I'm going to drill a hole for the roll pin. So it's a quarter inch hole. The good news is we're already centered. This one's about three to five. Okay, so you can see here's our here's our old one. Here's our new one. It's a lot more meaty looking. Same principle, same looking part, but we're bigger here so that we can slip over the center shaft on the riser. And then we also went a little bit bigger on our slots just to make sure that they slip over the T section. So let's get those cleaned up and then we'll start reassembling. Okay, our parts all cleaned up. Looks good. 
Now we got our quarter inch roll pin here and I think this one's inch and a half. If you look at these you can see there's a tapered end on this end. Hopefully you can see that. This end's pretty square. So that tapered end is the end we want to start with. We want to start with that end and I usually like to start it. I'll just set it on the table and start it on the table and then I'll put it on my workpiece that it attaches to and drive that in. We'll go to that point. Okay, so we got it started. As you can see, I've uh, put a bushing in there. I used that other one, machined it down just a little bit, and built a bushing because I'm a moron and I machined this whole thing out to be the size of the stem on the riser. Well, I should have had a step in there that stepped down from 7 8 to 3 quarter, and I didn't. So then when I put it on and there was all sorts of slop, I said a few choice words and then I went back over to the lathe and turned that old piece into a bushing. So this is going to work. I mean, it's a valve, so it's a uh, little modification there. You can see that there's a step in there, so I just used it as a bushing. I had to tap it in there with a hammer. I mean, it isn't like it's on a machine spinning 3600 RPM or anything like that, so I think it's going to work. So let's see if we can't get this pin driven on here. Okay, so it's going in. We're a little bit off on our hole. So I need to just tap this out just a little bit. Okay. As you can see, it's through both sides. Sucker's nice and tight. Even with the creativity of the bushing in there, that's still solid. It's gonna work just fine. You can see whoever built this, which was not me, that hole they drilled through this is crooked. That's kind of why we had to fight it just a little bit to get it through the hole the rest of the way once we got through the other side. It's gonna be okay. So now what I do is I'll probably drive this one down the rest of the way until it's flush. And then I'll take and cut the rest of this off, hit it with a buffing wheel or something so it looks good, it's nice and smooth, it's flush, and then we'll put the rest of the valve together. Okay, so that's nice and flush, looks good. Let's cut this off. I'm just gonna. She's just a little bit high and then I'm going to hit it with this buffing wheel and try not to scuff up my nice pretty part. Bam! I like it. Okay, now we got to put the other end on so what we got to do here 
this goes up through here. And then our handle goes on here. Here's our roll pin for the handle. No, it's not. This is our roll pin for the handle, and it's hammered, so we're going to replace it. Again, tapered side goes in first. I'm going to start it on the table. Try not to smash my feener. Sometimes it takes some pressure. I mean, you can look at that spring pin and see that it is under some tension right there where it first goes in, which is what you want, but sometimes they take a little bit of coaxing to get them going. Okay, so I drove that one in until it was flush. Same thing here, I'm going to cut that off and then hit it with the buffing wheel and she'll be done. see there our part that drops in over the riser and then that'll turn it on on or off our handle is good all right okay so here's a look at what the risers look like you can see they've got that center shaft in the middle and then the T piece is where our coupling piece that we machined slips over the top of that. So that just kind of gives you a visual of what we got going and why we had to machine it the way we had to machine it. And then you've got the valve that clamps onto that collar down below it. That'll just give you guys an opportunity to understand what we got going. So when you operate this, you just push this valve down the pressure makes the valve handle stick up and then you'll feel it you can feel it fall into the groove and then obviously if you let it go the pressure is gonna make it stick up and then there's what's called a chevron gasket in here and that's what keeps it from leaking all over the pressure pushes the handle up and seals that I know because I had to replace it because when we first put it on it was spraying water everywhere so Farmer Ted went ahead and got another Chevron gasket and we threw that in there and now he's back up and running so that's going to wrap this one up appreciate you guys watching see you on the next one